a special night as we are going to get to honor Jody here in a little bit. Uh, as we continue on with our lesson, we're wanting to look on, uh, sort of adding on what we looked at this morning. Uh, as we're looking at, looking at God's Word, uh, what does that we talked about, a couple of ideas or questions that we want to ask. Uh, as we're talking to other individuals, we want to see what does the Bible say. We talked about the idea of bringing that up. We ask ourselves, are we seeking his will and have we accepted his word? Now tonight, what I want us to do quickly is to look at about five passages. I'm looking at some things considering how we can make this idea of taking God's word and making it a bigger part of our life. We mentioned some of these verses in referencing this morning, but we want to look at a little more detail. The first of which is Psalm, uh, the very first Psalm, Psalm 1. We're just going to be looking at the first three verses as we as we study tonight. Psalmist said, How blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He'll be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields fruit in its season. Its leaf doesn't wither. Whatever he does, he prospers. Here we see the idea of the fact that we can prosper in our lives if we will think about God's word and meditate on it. As Jerry was praying for us tonight, think about the idea that this year is almost over. Can you believe that 2022 is coming to an end? We've got one more Sunday morning left. Uh, life passes by quickly. Year after year it rolls through and what is the thing that we want to look at? We want to realize that the word of God is going to be here forever and we want to meditate and think and focus on those things. I hope as we move into the next year, you're thinking about how you can meditate on God's Word in a better way. We've talked about different ideas. Maybe it's another tool that you're going to get. Maybe it's going to be a study Bible that you want to pick up, or maybe you're going to uh, find a new Bible that you want to walk through. Maybe it's here that you're going to pick up your app and you're going to run through on your Bible different apps that are going to help you to read in a more specific way. Maybe this next year, you're going to read through God's entire Word and you're wanting to follow it through in that way. Maybe it's going to be that you need to meditate on it and you just need certain verses that are going to help you in life and you can take those verses and put them on a note card and say, this is the thing that I am praying for God to help me with. As I'm dealing with my temper or as I'm dealing with forgiveness for somebody else or as I'm dealing with different struggles or my enemy, I'm going to remember these things. The idea of meditating is just going to be that I'm going to constantly have this in my mind. And when it comes to handling God's word, that's what we have to do. If we want it to change us, if we want it to transform our lives, we have to put it in front of us and can constantly consider it. Sometimes that's going to be that you're going to meditate, and as you're reading, uh, you may like to underline. Some of you don't like to write in your Bibles, but you can sit there and have a notebook beside it, can't you? And you can write down those notes. But God's word is not to be something that simply, well, here, I got my chapter read tonight. It's supposed to be something that we're thinking about to meditate on it, to consider it, and to continually say, how can this help my life? As we're thinking about things to do tonight, I hope that each one of us will consider how we can better meditate on God's Word. The second thing I would say to you tonight is take it with you. Take it with you. What do I mean by that? This is something that we don't want to leave home without. As you look in God's Word, you see there in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17, he says, take the helmet of salvation. The fact that you are saved needs to be on your mind. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Paul there was talking about the armor. As we're going out, we want to stand in the Lord and in the power of his might. We're going up against an adversary, and one thing that you want to take with you is God's Word. You think about how you can do that and taking it within your heart. As you're meditating on it, that means I'm going to have it in my mind as now I'm going to interact with this situation that I've been thinking about how God's word applies to us. Do you imagine a lot of times in movies, I like these uh, old-time battle movies, and they'll have all the different wars coming out of the Lord of the Rings. They'll have it too. Could you imagine an entire army topping the hill, and you've got all the music, and they come running down the hill, and none of them have a sword? Just running. What's going to happen with an army? Doesn't matter how many run in full speed with no sword. They're in a world of trouble, aren't they? 
God is telling us, that, look, I've given you a lot of armor, and before we go out, we've got to put on the armor. We don't just carry a Bible because the armor is going to say that we need to, be, we need to be ready to have the gospel. You know, that's what's carrying our feet, and the truth is going to hold us together, and we're doing our best to be righteous as we put on that breastplate, and we're going and we're working on our faith, and our belief in God is going to be something that's key and is going to extinguish all these fiery darts. We need to put all of that armor on. We don't run out there with nothing but the Bible. We have taken upon ourselves the effects of our meditation on God's word and then we take it out with us as well and God's word will help defend us because whenever that that uh, that message comes across and we know it's not true God's word is going to help to defend us we have to have it with us but it's also a weapon of offense it's going to be a weapon that we can go and reach out to other people we can go out and try to share his word with other people as well so as we think about going out into life, we want to go out and say, how can I take God's word into this situation with me today? How can I use it to defend myself? And also, how can I use it to reach out to somebody else? That leads into the third thing I wanted to consider was we need to make sure that we're sharing it. We want to share it with others in our Let Our Light Shine class. We're meeting in Fellowship Hall 3. We're sort of walking through this idea of how can we share God's word with other people. And uh, a lot of times it's difficult to know what to say or to know what to do. One thing I definitely want to challenge all of us tonight as we're thinking about it is this week is the easiest week of the year for you to tell somebody else, hey, where are you going to worship on Sunday? Would you come with me? The world, all kinds of people that may not be thinking about going to worship all year long, they're thinking about it this week. They're sitting around and wondering, and if they're new to town, they're probably thinking, well, maybe I probably ought to go somewhere. It's a very easy time for us to think about, look, where are you going to go? What are you thinking about? I hope that all of us will leave tonight thinking, I'm going to find somebody that I'm going to talk to about and say, you know what? We would love to have you with us at Southgate. I would love for you to come and to see how the Word became flesh. Hope that we'll share that with other people. But as we think about that, sometimes it's difficult to think, well, how exactly can I share God's word with somebody else? Uh, we talked about different ideas that we can do, and I think it's important. So we leave, we say, hey, tomorrow you could say, you know what? I heard this yesterday in worship. And share with them a passage that you heard. Or you know what? I've been thinking about that situation, and what comes to my mind is, and you can share a passage from Scripture that can help them in that situation very easy to work into a conversation and say, you know what, I've been thinking about something. I read this, and I was, what, do you, what do you think about that? And let somebody else share their idea with you as you think about God's Word. Uh, you can talk to other people and say, you know what, God's Word's really blessed me lately, and one of the things, that, the message that's really helped me feel better is, and all of those conversations are an opportunity to simply share a verse with somebody else. Somebody else is dealing with hardships and say, you know what I think about? When I hear about that, I think about this because, and then share with them a verse about what's going on. Why would I say that? Well, I think you see in front of you Hebrews 4.12, a pretty good reason to do that. As you're talking to other people, every time you have an opportunity to point back to what you've been meditating on, to point back on something that you're saying, how can I take this message with me on a daily basis? You're giving them an opportunity to come in contact with the Word of God. And what does it say? It's living it's active, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of the soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and is able to judge the thoughts and intents of the heart. Whenever you share God's word, sometimes it's going to be that you're going to tell them something that God has said. And let's never underestimate the power of that. Let's realize that God has given us something that has forever changed our life and can forever change that other person's life. Now, we can't make them accept it, but we can give them the opportunity to plug into the power that is there. So let's share God's word by telling them what it says, but also I want to encourage you tonight to share it by how you live. What is God's Word doing in your life? As we meditate on it, as we think about it, as we carry it with us, as we want to have it be our constant companion, we don't want to go into any battle without it as we're focusing on that, I want us to realize that so many people are most affected by what they see. You can know a great painter by looking at their paintings. You can see that it's a great songwriter when you listen to their song, right? You can see that it's a great builder whenever you walk through the building that they have put together. 
And others can know that we have a great God when we allow them to see what he has done in our lives. The transformation that we can make through as we fight off that temptation everybody else has given into, people are going to say there's something different about you. And what is it? Well, it's the God that has given me his word and has affected my life. Whenever we deal with conflict, others are looking, and we know what the rest of the world does, but they look at us and see that we are trying to do the best we can to be peacemakers. Whenever they see a world that's chasing after constant pleasure and they see that, look, what we're striving to do is simply please the one who has made us as they look at us, how can we share his word? By showing what has happened in our lives. John chapter 8, verse 31, Jesus was saying to those Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, then you're truly disciples of mine. And you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. We love that idea that God's word and his truth is what can set us free. But in the midst of that, Jesus was saying, look, ultimately you can be my disciple if you have allowed it to totally affect your life. It's been said many times, people would much rather see a sermon than hear one. They don't want to hear more people that can talk about what God does or what God can do. They never tire of seeing what God has done in somebody else's life. So we have an opportunity to take that message, to say, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Well, how do I know you're a disciple? Because I'm watching you. And as I see you and I see your actions and I see the differences that God is making in your life, it helps me to understand how great he is. We don't just study it. We don't just learn it. We don't just repeat it. We're called to live according to God's word. Jesus then went on again in John chapter 14, verse 15. He says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. The passages after that, he'll start to uh, talk about and discuss the spirit and the role of the spirit in their lives and how he was going to have the spirit sent to them and they could be guided and directed and be fully engaged in allowing their lives to be transformed but then he comes back once again in verse 21 and says he who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me and the one who loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and disclose myself to him and what do you see Jesus time and again is going back saying look when you interact with my word and you allow it to change you that's what a disciple does and what happens it shows how we love him and our Father is going to love us, and he's going to show himself to us even in a deeper way. So as we go out, may we embody the gospel message in our lives. Let's live as those who love our God, and let's uh, show others the God that we are serving. Because ultimately, what does he say? Well, you're going to love me, and you're going to care for other people. And as we care for our neighbors, we're going to be blessed as well. Final thought this morning is Colossians, or this evening is Colossians 3. 16 and 17 it's the one that we began with tonight so we think about sharing with other people I think this passage sort of encapsulated the entire idea of our verses we've looked at tonight he says let the word of Christ dwell uh, richly dwell within you ultimately where God's word has its greatest effect is when it takes seed in a heart when it's planted. Isn't that what Jesus said? The word's going out, but he's looking for the heart that is good soil that will take it in. And what happens when you take it in? What happens when you meditate on it? All of a sudden, fruit starts to be born. And all of a sudden, good things are going to start happening in your life, and it's going to be forever changed. And he says, you let God's word dwell in you richly in all wisdom. He says, look, we can teach and admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. We can sing with thankfulness in our hearts to God. Once we have those things in our lives, it makes worship so much easier because we have seen on a daily basis what God has done and what he has called us to be. And then he says this, and whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to the Father. I hope tonight that we'll be encouraged. We'll be encouraged to seek God's will, to accept his word, to meditate on it, and then go out and see how we can share it with other people. If it's by words, let's share words. If it's by our lives, let's make sure we're focused on that example. But let's make sure that we're trying the best we can to share God's word by what we say and what we do. What a beautiful call we've been given. I hope those words can encourage you tonight. As we close tonight, we always want to give opportunity for those to come to the Lord, uh, those that are wanting to make a decision. Maybe you're there tonight. Maybe you're ready to make that decision. God has a beautiful life to give us. 
He wants to set us free. He gives us a purpose. He wants to help change us, but we have to first come and follow him. If you're not a Christian, we want to invite you to do that tonight. You can come in believing faith, turning from sin, being buried in the waters of baptism. We will celebrate with you tonight. But also as we come together, the year is coming to an end. Another year has passed. Are you where you want to be with God right now? Do you feel good about your relationship with him? Or do you need help? Do you want us to pray with you? Do you want us to pray for you? Do you need us to come around you and give you the encouragement uh, that you need to be everything that God wants you to be? A loving God invites us to him to come into his presence, to cast our cares upon him, to ask him for forgiveness. And if we can help you to do that in any public way, we want to. If we can help you in any way, we invite you to come as we stand. Sing.